Hi friends, in this session we will discuss preparation strategy for FRM part 2 for May 23 session. You can also apply the same strategy for November 23 session as well. My name is Shashank Pandey, I am certified FRM and I am faculty and mentor for FRM part 1 and FRM part 2 at Falcon and Fin, which is GAAP approved preparation provider. Now, now the strategy is very important in FRM part 2's preparation. The first reason is FRM part 2 exam and preparation is very different from FRM part 1. In FRM part 2, the concepts are new for almost everyone, irrespective of what is your background education, you are going to see all the new concepts. With this, we have the examination, which is very case study based examination. So you should be very well prepared for that particular examination so that you clear this exam. Now, in FRM part one, if you are coming from, uh, say, if you are coming from, say, CFA or CA or uh, say MBA finance, then in those courses, the derivatives part or the fixed income part or the statistics part is already covered. So in this particular case, these type of students or the students who are coming from these background uh, educations, uh, they have some advantages because they already know the concepts and that gives some advantage and preparation time is less for FRM part one. On the other hand, in FRM part two, because majority of the concepts are new, everyone, almost everyone requires equal time to prepare. Now, is it possible to prepare FRM part two in six months? Six months time as in starting from say December, you decide to prepare in the uh, December, uh, start your preparation in December and um, your exam is in May, by 20th of May. So yes, it is possible. Is it possible to prepare FRM part two in four months? Yes, it is possible, but then you have to reduce your preparation time in some areas and there is method to reduce that preparation time but yes it is possible so it is not the problem okay so problem is not six months or four months it is a preparation strategy or the methodology you use for the preparation before we begin the discussion let's see some key points so first and most important point which is very crucial for FRM part of students is starting early what happens generally when student appear for FRM part one, then the students wait for FRM part one's result so that they can start their FRM part two preparation. Now your result will be in like say last uh, week of December and ideally generally students start their preparation by Jan. Okay, so part two preparation by Jan. And if you start your preparation in Jan, then you have only four months. So Jan, Feb, March, April. So these are the four months you have for the preparation. And obviously in May, you have 20 days, but most of the students will be revising that particular period. Now, in these four months, if you are doing, or if you are trying FRM part two by self, then there might be some chaos in the preparation, okay? And generally students are unable to finish their preparation and specifically those who are going with the self study. So if you want to avoid this mistake, make sure you start your preparation as soon as possible. Don't wait for your result. At least you can target one subject. Um, you can finish one subject before your result, say market risk or the investment risk. Then you have to focus on concepts. You must understand all the concepts properly. That's a requirement of FRM part two, same as FRM part one. Then you have to follow right sequence of subjects. Right now it is like uh, follow right sequence of topic is written, but you have to follow right sequence of subject. Topic wise sequence is not very important in FRM part two, which is very important in FRM part one. So if you miss or if you don't follow the topic wise sequence, then this is going to create a problem in preparation. So your preparation will take more time uh, if you avoid or if you don't follow the sequence. On the other hand, in FRM part two, the subject wise sequence is important and I will also share the word, what should be the sequence and all. So don't worry about it. Then FRM part two is very really key points, uh, heavy examination. So you have to remember key points which are given in your syllabus. And this is the key to clear this exam. Now what happens, all those key points are mixed with the general text, general text written in the ex uh, your books. So because it is mixed, Students don't know exactly like these are the key points they need to remember for exam. Okay. And generally students are unable to recall or exactly uh, remember those key points or re recall those key points in examination and that creates a big problem. So make sure you recall or you remember all the key points which are given in your syllabus and follow deadlines. I will share what is a follow deadlines deadlines as in a preparation deadline. I said like you can prepare FRM part two in six months as well as in four months. Now, 
if you don't follow deadlines then six months and four months are, is not going to help you you ha you will suffer in the preparation so you have to follow deadlines as in you have to finish a subject in particular time frame so again i will share all the deadlines so we have deadlines here now see subject wise difficulty level as well as the exam scoring difficulty level now let's understand what is this so preparation difficulty means when you are trying by self again i am assuming you are doing self study and not taking any video classes from falcon or from any other institute so if you are preparing by self then the difficulty level like is it easy to understand or difficult to understand and like that and then there is a exam score difficulty now exam score difficulty is based on your preparation now once you prepare properly is it easy to score in the exam or difficult to score in exam or easy to tick right answer in exam or difficult to tick right, right answer in exam so this is the difficulty so preparation difficulty prep difficulty and exam score difficulty so in market risk 50% syllabus is very easy because 50% is a repetition of FRM part 1. So first six topics are repetition and then there are other topics which are similar to FRM part 1. Example, the first five, six topics are value at risk based. So you already know the value at risk concept from FRM part 1. So those topics will be easy to prepare. Then we have fixed income section, the term structure section, the worldly smile section. And that section is difficult to understand or learn by self. Okay. So this is the difficulty level. But once you understand these concepts, ex scoring this particular scoring uh, right on this particular subject in exam is very easy. Why? Because most of the questions are generally point based or direct questions. Once you understand the concept, you will be able to take the right answer. And that's the good thing with market risk. So this is really important thing because if you are putting efforts on a one particular subject, you should be able to score in that subject. Okay. And that's how we clear exam. Right. So reason is again, the key point testing is there and core question testing is there in market risk. Okay. So here in market risk, the base syllabus is structured or the type of concepts which are discussed in the syllabus have the nature where even if I'm drafting or say GAP is drafting question, we can't twist that particular question a lot. Okay. There is no possibility because the learning objective and the concepts are in a particular manner. Now in credit risk, whole syllabus is difficult almost like all these chapters are difficult to understand maybe there are some exceptions two or three topics are easy to understand but majority of the topics are difficult to understand but again scoring it in exam is easy if you know what are the key points you're supposed to remember uh, for exam and second if you know all the calculations which are required like which are important from the exam standpoint so that's the key here second trade risk now operational risk operational risk can be categorized categorized in easy to medium difficulty from the preparation standpoint but this is difficult this particular subject is difficult to score in exam why because majority of the section majority of the questions are theory based questions and there is space or scope to twist the questions language the twist the uh, the, the case study okay so this becomes slightly difficult this particular topic is or subject is difficult to score in the examination so from this particular standpoint once you know the topic or subject is difficult to score in exam you have to make sure the how much time you are putting or you are putting a only required time on that subject. If you put extra time, even if you put say next four months on just one subject operational risk, your exam is not going to get easy. Okay. So your exam will be difficult in that particular aspect in operational risk. So that's a problem. Second problem with operational risk is operational risk is very, very lengthy subject. You have approximately from 2022 uh, syllabus. You have approximately 26 topics, 26 to 28 topics. And all those topics are very theory based topics. Rarely you have few topics which are of the numerical nature or there are numerical of the calculations, but majority are the theory and it is very boring theory. If you ask me from my experience, I teach operational risk, but it is very diff uh, boring subject. Okay. So generally students consume a lot of time in reading that particular subject. So you have to decide a strategy. Generally at Falcon, we provide summary notes, a key points notes so that students don't bother about the key points in uh, their preparation. Okay. So to reduce their preparation time. So you can also opt for these type of strategies. Then there is a liquidity risk in liquidity risk. We have a uh, mix and match. Okay. So mix concepts. Some are easy. Some are medium. There is no concept which is difficult to understand. Okay. So that's the advantage of liquidity risk. But again, in exam, you will face medium to difficult uh, level from the scoring standpoint. Now, 
the same logic is applicable here. This subject is not very lengthy, but again, very theory based and questions are very theory based. Okay. So again, the case study and theory, it creates problem in examination. Then comes the investment risk. Investment risk is easy to understand. Majority of the concepts are same or the, all the important concepts are based on FRM part one CAPM section, the capital asset pricing model. And again, you will have the, all the repetitions like the CAPM is the repeated here. Then CAPM, some advanced discussions are repeated. Sharp trainer, Sortino, everything will get repeated in the investment risk. And in, in, in this particular subject, those concepts are most important concepts. Okay. So again, that's the advantage here. Again, this is easy to score, but because the exam will be like direct testing. So key points will be tested in the exam or the calculations will be tested ex in exam. Again, the calculations are not going to be very difficult. Uh, generally in FRM part two calculations are easy. Calculation based questions are easy, not very difficult. Now current issues easy to prepare, but it takes like it is slightly like medium or easy kind of uh, subject to score in exam because again, all eight questions are going to be theory questions. So that's the thing. Next deadlines. Assuming you start your preparation now, you can start with either of these two subjects. So market risk or investment risk because market risk and investment risk are directly uh, based on FRM part one's curriculum. So you can start with, or you should start with these two subjects because you have connect with FRM part one and now you're starting your uh, FRM part two's preparation. So start with connected subject. If you take new subject completely, then you might get intimidated by the, uh, those concepts. So always start with these two subjects. Again, you can start with market risk or investment risk. I'm taking market risk as first subject to prepare. So start with market risk. Your target deadline should be 31st of December, 2022. So by the time you get your result, make sure you are done with market risk preparation. Then move on to investment risk and by 15th of Jan, you should be able to, because investment risk is like smaller subject. You will get only 12 questions in exam. And there are limited topics and those topics are not very lengthy topics. So 15 days are good enough for uh, investment risk preparation. Then there is credit risk. Credit risk is difficult. You have a lot of new concepts and you will need at least a month to prepare this again from the self study standpoint. Liquidity risk, you should be able to finish it by 10th of March. So 20, 25 days are more than enough for this particular subject liquidity risk. Then for operational risk, I took 20 days for operational risk preparation. Now operational risk is operational risk subject is like a rubber. If you stretch it or if you stretch your preparation time, you will be able to stretch it. Okay. So it is not going to like easy. So what you're supposed to do is fix deadline. Like I will prepare this subject in 20 days, whatever I can prepare, I will prepare and start reading and try to finish your preparation as soon as possible. If you don't set deadline, it might end up this. I have seen happening this with a lot of students. It might end up consuming your one and a half month easily. Okay. But if you rush uh, in preparation in this particular subject, you will be able to finish this particular subject prepare, uh, e easily. And in the short duration, 20 days are sufficient, but you have to read faster. Okay. And there are no concepts in operational risk. Concepts are not difficult. Concepts are easy, but boring. Okay. And in boring section, move faster. So you'll be able to, it will reduce your preparation time. Then there is a current issues. Current issues will hardly take five days. Uh, generally I prepare, um, uh, we provide notes, which are of hardly 10, 12 pages and the current issues notes. And this is like more than enough. Five days are more than enough to pre finish your uh, current issues preparation. After this, you should start your revision or you can also do the simultaneous revision. Again, start with the market risk, investment risk, credit risk, and in the same order, and you have to finish your uh, revision then appear from mock test and so on. Now this is about a, a study package for FRM part two May 23. So we provide video classes, question bank to round off full mock test. Uh, then short notes, one to one doubt solving session. This is a mentorship uh, session. And then validity is till you clear the examination and delivery will start on 15th of December, uh, 2022. Uh, and this time delivery will be monthly. We won't be able to deliver complete syllabus immediately by 15th of December reason I can't share now after GAP releases their syllabus for May 23, you will understand why I'm saying this. Okay. So it's all about FRM part two's, uh, May 23, May 23 preparation strategy. Thank you for listening. See you in the next video. If you have any doubts, you can comment on this video. I will help you with all those problems or queries. Thank you everyone.